What's up, Melinda? I wanted to ask how to mentally prepare our family for my husband's upcoming deployment. Is this his first one? Second. Second one. Okay, so tell me about the first one. So the first one, um, it was a nine-day notice, so we kind of ripped the Band-Aid early on. Ooh. Yeah. How long was he gone? Um, for about seven and a half months. Nine days and seven and a half months? Yeah. Whoa, <laughs> that is slap it up, flip it, and reverse it, dude. That's quick. So that, so y'all got through it, I guess, right? We did. We did. We did get through it. We um, we came out of our marriage a lot stronger. Okay. Our kids at the time, um, but were about one and three ish. Oh my gosh. And so, <laughs> so they, I mean, they didn't know any better. So it was, it was kind of like thinking back now, it was kind of easy. Um, now fast forward, they're five and seven. So now it's, oh, you know, they're more attached. So that's why I'm kind of like wanting to seek more advice on how to come, go around at this go around. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So you got a five and a seven year old. How long have y'all been married? Uh, we've been married for going on seven and together for 11. Okay. Uh, dude, islands in the stream. That's what y'all are, dude. That's awesome. Seven and 11. Very cool. And then, Hey, what did you learn last time that helped improve your marriage? Communication is Ooh, what really does that, key. What does that mean? Um, that means if I'm having a hard time, I kind of need him to be my ear. Okay. You know, through the good and the bad. Um, and on his side, he kind of like puts like, I don't know. He, there's a boundary. Like he can tell me about all the work stuff, but at the same time, I can't understand all that he's going through. Right. Yeah. And that that's one of the most common things I hear from couples and especially from the person who's deployed is how do I stay present in my relationship at home and not let them know what's actually going on here and not let them know, hey, we were, you know, drove over an IUD today and not fill in the blank. Right. And be fully present there, but all yeah, it just becomes really tricky. And how do you, as mom, get to have a bad day when you know he's over there doing God knows what, right? So it's that mess, man. So what are some tricks you guys learned to communicate better? Um, I guess just uh, making time, you know, when the kids are asleep or, you know, being on opposite schedules, making that time whether it's super early for him or it's super late for me like making time that we can actually you know just have a conversation whether it's like just can just talk like we would regularly but outside of all the background like our situation or whatnot uh, okay. um yeah I, I think that would be so when did, when does he leave uh sometime this summer okay so you got a few months to plan for this mm -hmm. are you gonna have time to do a vacation together, do something fun together, or is it going to be work, 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 and then we're out of here? Uh, we've been taking vacations. Um, so the, the this deployment, we've known it for about nine months ahead of time. Okay, That's like good and bad. We're able to plan it better, but it's bad in the sense it's kind of like dragging and getting <laughs> dreadful. Yeah, and it keeps going and going. So what do your kids think about this? We haven't told them yet. What? Yeah, we don't. So Melinda, why? We don't know. Why? We, we will. We just don't want to drag it for them either. Okay. So we were thinking like two, three months before he actually does, you know, deploy to go ahead and let them know that this is what's going to be happening. Okay. Your heart and his heart are in the right place. And it is, <laughs> but it's out in the yard. Okay. So you want to give them time to digest this internalize this and norm this okay? okay and there's several ways you guys can do this as a couple um and there's some really cool ways y'all can do this as a couple here's the thing they're gonna miss their dad you're right. gonna miss their your husband y'all's family unit is gonna have a big gaping hole in it right and the Band-Aid thing can kind of work for grown-ups because you guys have multiple frames of references. This is their world and giving them some heads up in ways that they can see and feel and understand really makes a difference. It turns it into a hard time. It, it, it switches it from it being a hard time to trauma, okay? okay. Dad disappearing after a nine-day notice or a two-week notice is a 
like that's a an explosion in a child's mind dad going through some things and we know this is going to happen and here's the day and here's when this happens that is something they can digest in little pieces okay so here's a couple things that i would recommend y'all do that can be a lot of fun it'll be hard but it'll be a lot of fun okay okay um first thing is is i would get on amazon or i would have your husband check around base there's going to be some children's literature about mom or dad deploying and what we want to do is we want to not leave what deployment looks like to your kid's imagination. We want to paint that in as clear a picture as possible. Reading stories to kids where they see themselves, they see daddy, they see mommy, is a beautiful way to let the kids digest it in a way that they can, you know, through a cartoon, right? Um, so I'd get online and see if you can buy some books and then just make reading at night a part of your rhythm moving forward. Do you all do that anyway? We do. Okay, awesome. So this is just some new literature you can you can introduce this weekend. You can get on Amazon today and order it, and they'll be here by the weekend, and you can start that. The second thing is, is begin, hopefully this doesn't sound cheesy, but I want this to become part of your rhythm so that when they go, it's a part of their rhythm. Begin a weekly, hey, we're going to make a thing for dad, you and the kids. And have your husband do a weekly, I'm going to make something for the kids. And then y'all can exchange them in person. And I want you and him to do the best you can to make this really grand gesture. Wow, this is so awesome. Big hugs, big music swells, like the whole thing, right? And it can be funny cards and silly cards and a weird art project with hair and grass. Whatever kids are up to. You know, they, kids are doing stuff. But I want them to get a picture of what it looks like when dad opens this or that. Because then when they do these things and, they, and you mail them to them, or you have a weekly Skype call with the kids and your husband overseas, they're going to be able to remember that and have a touch point to it, right? And so it's going to become part of this rhythm that you can continue when he's overseas. Another thing you may want to do is once a week, have him call them on, on FaceTime, on Skype. They can get used to that conversation, that way of talking, and it can be silly and fun. They can come up with a game that they're going to do naturally. And then when he goes overseas and you do a weekly call with the kids and you get everybody on, then again, they, they're they able to have some touch point feelings. We remember that when dad was inside and he was in the garage and now he's overseas and this was pretty cool. And it's not going to be easy. And it's not going to be fun. And here's one last thing I would recommend. See if your husband would be willing to do little bits of PT with them, little bits of training, little bits of, hey, we're going to dress up and so that they can have a mental picture of what's dad's day like when he's overseas. Is he jogging and working out? Is he having to do push-ups and sit-ups and the kids can climb all over him? Does he have to do jujitsu practice? Does he have to stand at attention really tall? Does he have to do some of those things? And again, all we're trying to do is to connect pictures to their reality right and then when he goes overseas it's gonna be hard yes they're gonna be so sad yes i'm gonna be tears and hugs yes but man they are not gonna have to invent what his life looks like because they'll have some pictures of what that's gonna look like and it'll give them time to process this um do you guys do things together y'all have meals together regularly uh breakfast and dinner we try to um really have together as a family I love, love that. So uh, one thing that I would introduce, and you may already do this, do you all do some sort of best and worst or the hardest laugh of the day or your favorite thing of the day? No, we don't. So start that tonight. Hey, new okay. thing, kids. We're doing a new thing in our house. What's your BMWs? What's the best thing? What's the worst thing that happened? What's the hardest thing? What's the funniest thing? And begin to introduce some of those things so that when you're having to text to your husband the next morning, if the kids have to go to bed and they don't get to see him or talk to him or text with him, you could say, hey, I got dad's B&Ws from last night. Again, another touch point. So as you hear me saying that, does that sound doable or are you still kind of freaked out that they're going to know so far in advance? That, that kind of puts it in a different perspective. I, I know I love these ideas especially the little PT training. I think the both kids would love, love, because they always want to go to work with him. Uh, okay. And, and so I think that one and the BMW, you know, it, would, it just would spark more conversation with, between us. So 
You are a mom that had to hold it together with a one and a three year old. I don't know how you did that. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> and you said our marriage even your marriage even got better. Tell me what's going on in your heart and mind during this transition. Um, nervous, super, super nervous. Um, I'm currently, uh, I don't know, I'm getting emotional. I just made me thinking about it. You're getting emotional because um, your husband's about to go overseas. That's okay. <laughs> um, I'm currently full-time in nursing school as well. Okay. So I'll be in my last year. And so just trying to like balance it all, making sure the kids know I'm present. Yeah. Even though I'm, you know, my schedule's going to be crazy. Hmm. Um, so Kelly gave me a heads up before this call, and I wanted to make sure I talked to somebody who's got some actual experience with this. So I actually called my good buddy, John, who is a uh, an active Navy SEAL, and said, hey, what would you recommend? What would you and your wife recommend? Because they've been through this. They've got kids. And the first thing he said, you know what he said was, make sure she has a gang, a group of people not even in the military. Sometimes that can be toxic, right? And where everyone just talks and it kind of gets gossipy. It may be, you may have a great circle of, of military wives, but I want you to start cultivating people that will be in your corner on those hard days and those exhausting days when on final exam and midterm days, on rotation days, that they will be able to show up when you text them and say, hey, can somebody help with dinner? And there will be no questions asked. They're just going to be your ride or die for the next year. And okay. if you take out a group of friends, you got a couple of friends like that now, like just, I do. A, yeah, I knew you would. You sound awesome. <laughs> if you have those folks and you take them out and say, Hey, I'm starting to get a little bit, whoo, cause my husband's going to leave again in a few months. I want to be able to count on you and I'll pay for pizza and beer sometimes, but there's going to be nights I text you and call you. And I want you guys, I want you to have this conversation over a meal. I want them to feel special. And I want you to let them know how important they are to you and make it a moment and let them know what they mean to you. And then say, there's going to be nights and I'm going to call you. Will you just go pick up some kind of garbage food for us to get us through the night? And they will be empowered and feel awesome and feel good. And it's going to give them some purpose, somebody to support and love and care on um, while you're going through what you're going through. And I know you did this last time. Don't forget to to stay in connection and communication with your husband. Always, always, I want to take a moment to honor the service men and women who go overseas. And I always want to take a moment and honor the service men and women, spouses, girlfriends, boyfriends who are staying at home, raising kids, trying to fit, get through school, holding down life. Um, that is a tough, tough gig. Melinda, I'm so grateful for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your call. Thank you for your service. Let me know how those conversations go with your kids um, and let us know how that works out. It will be a blessing and a gift to other families in your same situation. So thanks for the call.